station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And good afternoon and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 4. Here's a look at today's top stories all across the DMV. Yeah, several dogs are dead following the flooding of a doggy daycare in the district here with pet owners in the area are saying in the aftermath of this tragedy and how district leaders are working to stop it from happening again. And folks, we had flooding out there yesterday and once again, additional storms are rolling through portions of the district. We'll tell you about where that rainfall could be headed coming up in just a bit. And student leaders at Howard University come together to discuss safety on campus. Our Leonard and Fleming will have the latest on today's conversation. And thanks for joining us on this Tuesday for DC News Now at 4. I'm Mark Hall. And I'm Annalisa Gale. We'll get to those top stories in just a few minutes, but yet another DMV first warrant day taking a live look outside at Rosin right now. We see the clouds are a little bit dark over there, but we could also see a little bit more rain out there. Yeah, let's head over now to meteorologist Damon Matz with the first look at our forecast. Damon, a little bit earlier, we had concerns about this afternoon. Are those concerns uh, still relevant? Yes, they are indeed, uh, guys, as we are talking about the additional chance of more rainfall, possibly some severe storms. And after the flooding issues we dealt with from yesterday's activity, we want to be hyper aware of the possibility of additional rounds of heavy rainfall and that possibility of flooding. We have a flood watch that stays in effect until 8 p.m. for the D.C. Metro and all surrounding counties right around the beltway there so the flooding threat is one of our major concerns here the rest of this evening on top of that the national weather service has also issued a severe thunderstorm watch for dc along and east of the i-95 corridor until 9 p.m as some of these storms that are producing heavy rainfall could also turn severe and produce some damaging wind gusts and folks just within the last couple of hours the activity has quickly picked up we already had a round of heavier rainfall pass right through DC, Fairfax County, Prince George's County. Some of the same areas hit very hard by that rainfall yesterday that saw flooding like we just mentioned as well. Now that first round has moved out of DC. It's currently quiet, but we're paying attention to another batch of heavier rainfall that is crossing Spotsylvania County, moving toward Fredericksburg and the I-95 corridor here. So again, we're watching that that as it could lead to some issues. No current warnings on this thunderstorm, this heavier rainfall as well. But some of the same areas hit hard earlier, just south and east of Manassas, moving from Blansford all the way over toward Lake Ridge, Woodbridge and Lorton along I-95. Another batch of heavier rainfall has developed and we again are keeping a close eye on that as well here, folks. So as we move along with time, we're going to continue to watch these thunderstorms and heavy heavier rainfall that's going to develop for the next few hours here at least up until 8 p.m. Then we should see things finally quiet down and we will be clear of the severe and flood risks. So we'll talk more about the potential impacts and timing of these storms for the rest of the evening. That's all coming up in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Right now we start with our top story, the latest on a flooding that left several dogs dead. Yeah, the dogs at the pet care company known as District Dogs drowned when a flood swamped the Northeast Washington business. DC News Now's Dave Laval has the latest. Good afternoon, Annalisa and Mark. Well, District Dogs remains closed after fire investigators determined it's not safe for the public to be in there. We still have not been told exactly how many dogs died here Monday night. One city council member I spoke to earlier today said some of the blame definitely lies with the district. The message that I want to send is that this is a city failure. DC Councilman Zachary Parker wants to investigate Monday's flooding that killed several dogs at District Dogs Daycare on Rhode Island Avenue. He's also concerned about how long it took rescue crews to respond. 
15 minutes from the time uh, employees from district dogs were calling into 911 until authorities were officially dispatched. It's really sad, it's really hard. Iowala Wenga and her pet Oregano among dozens that stopped by to see the devastation. I couldn't imagine like having my dog and then coming back and being told like it drowned. Like the, the cause of death is so tragic, you know, so sad. Tributes lie in front of the business, the same place where nearly six feet of water poured into it just a day earlier. What frustrates me the most about this is multiple people lost their fur babies. Michelle Jones operates Little Run's pet care business. She says what happened Monday night breaks her heart. You just caused like multiple people to lose members of their family. So like this is a very traumatic experience. DC fire and EMS crews rescued as many dogs as they could from the business that's located in a flood prone area. The new northeast boundary tunnel is set to go online by the end of September and will, according to DC water, add 90 million gallons of storage for stormwater. However, it should have been operating in March. District dogs suffered minor flooding just about one year ago. The difference between then and now is no dogs died. We're live in Brentwood. Dave Laval, DC News Now. Dave, thank you. And right now, the mother of the six-year-old student who shot his teacher at Richneck Elementary School entered a plea deal today. Deja Taylor pleaded guilty to felony child neglect and a misdemeanor charge tied to allegedly storing a gun recklessly. Here's what her attorney had to say after that plea. She feels very responsible, feels very bad, and I think that's part of just the general irritability, anxiety, depression, and everything else. Has she um, said anything about being prepared to go beyond bars? I mean, obviously it's a possibility, so um, I guess if, if that occurs, uh, it's just something that she'll have to deal with. Abby Zwerner, the teacher injured in that shooting, is seeking $40 million in a lawsuit against the school system. Well, with the new school year upon us, Washington County, Maryland is turning its attention to a new initiative, Community Schools. And Alcorn Teachers Association President Neil Becker is busy putting the concept in place. Becker says the partnership with organizations like Girls Incorporated, the Maryland Food Bank, the Boy Scouts, and the Girl Scouts are part of the plan. Becker says forging these relationships will give students a stronger connection to Washington County outside the classroom. Community schools um, really uh, provide the foundation for our students and the success that they can achieve. And that strong education um, really builds a strong economy and a strong community. Well, Becker is making a transition. He's been the Teachers Association president for the past eight years. And Association Vice President Carol Mullen will assume a role as president with the new school year. Well, Howard University has been grappling with several violent crimes or near on campus or near campus, leaving many concerned about safety. Yeah, which is why top university officials held a virtual town hall today with parents and students to discuss their concerns and to reiterate that they are taking student safety very seriously. Our political and government reporter Leonard N. Fleming sat in on that virtual town hall and Leonard's staff and students at Howard are ready to see an end to this violence. Mark and Annalisa, they are. That town hall held today was to show students and administrators, they say, that they are taking the, these crime incidents instigated by juveniles from the district very seriously, and that they want students and faculty to feel safe. Less than a week before students return to Howard University, questions about safety in and around the historically black college campus in Northwest DC are front and center. University officials say that an, an, an unruly group of young people known to DC police and university police helped ignite recent violent events. Two of those events happened Saturday night. The first at Banneker Park across from campus. DC, poli DC police broke up that incident and then another time later at a subway on Georgia Avenue. This comes after an early morning fatal shooting on campus last month of a construction worker in an attempted robbery. Listen to Howard University Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer uh, Toshni DeBroy at today's town hall. 
What we have to understand is that these these locals are agitating our students. This is a vulnerable population because they've never been in D.C. before. And so what we are going to work to do is ensure that our students are acclimated to their surroundings. We want you to feel safe. We want you to have a good time. Now these efforts turn to solutions. More cameras and security measures are going up across campus. Also, university officials say they have disciplined a contract worker and a police lieutenant to address student concerns that they were not properly heard during these incidents. Reporting in the studio, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now, back to you.